Hiya, welcome back to my channel and to this new weekly reading vlog. Today it is Monday the 9th of November and I have some really, really exciting reading plans for this week. There is a heavy emphasis, as usual, you're not going to be surprised, on some fantasy books this week. So I have some really exciting fantasy picks that I've been hearing so much about recently and I can't wait to get to them. So the first book that I'm hoping to read this week, you may have seen it in last week's reading vlog, I was talking about it and I said I was considering starting it this week and that is Kingdom of the Wicked by Kerry Maniscalco. Kerry Maniscalco is the author of a really famous series called Stalking Jack the Ripper and I've read, I believe I read two of them. The first one I quite enjoyed, I think it was like a 3.5 stars, and then the second one was quite slow for me, I took like four months to read it, so it was like a three stars. They aren't bad books, but I wasn't super into them because if you know me, you know I love like fantasy and magical things, and I just think that can add so much excitement and stuff to books, and I just thought they were a bit slow for me. But then I heard about her new series, and it has a kind of similar premise in the way that it's about a girl and a boy who have to team up together and solve a crime, but... It's fantasy and that just made me think oh my god I have to read it because I really enjoyed that sort of element of the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. I love seeing the relationship with the two main characters and seeing how they solve the crimes together and I just think that it's going to be so fun to see in a fantasy context so I'm really excited for this. It is about main character Amelia and she is a witch and she and her sister have been living in society in secret for years but suddenly her twin sister is murdered and she has to team up with Wrath who is like a demon of hell sort of thing, and they have to solve the crime together of who committed this murder. It just sounds super interesting. I love anything magical, any sort of supernatural creatures I'm in, and especially I'm really excited to explore like Wrath and how his emotions and his personality are tied to that name. Like, is he a really super angry person? Is he gonna flip out constantly throughout the book? I'm excited to see and I just can't wait to start this this week and I'm hoping it will be a really fun easy read and I'll get through it pretty quickly. And then the second book that I'd love to read, I have bought it on my Kindle, it is ready to read and that is From Burden Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And I've been hearing so much about this one recently and what tipped me over the edge to actually buy it was my lovely friend Jocelyn from Jocelyn Reads. Please check out her channel, she is amazing, she's just so funny and lovely and her videos just have the best vibes, you have to check her out. Anyway, she was raving about this in her last wrap up and she has a really similar taste to me in the fact that we both like fantasy and romance and she said that this book has the perfect blend of fantasy and romance. That honestly sounds like the ideal book to me, to be honest. If you notice in my reviews, I do tend to focus a lot, I've realized, on relationships, whether it be like platonic or romantic. I do think that that is a huge part of my reading experience and something I really love seeing. So the fact that this is a fantasy with a huge emphasis on romance, I'm sold, I need to read this immediately and I can't wait and I believe it has vampires in it, that's like the fantasy element and it has a lot of like power play with like politics and kingdoms and stuff which sounds really interesting and I believe the main character is this innocent pure maiden girl, that's like her role in society and she meets this boy and he's kind of dark and mysterious and people are turning up dead with like vampire bites in their neck. So I'm really, really excited to read this one this month. I got that on my Kindle, so it's all ready to read and I'm just so, so excited. So I'm sure I'll be able to get to that this week and I'll let you know my thoughts on that as I'm reading it. And I'm thinking if I somehow <laughs> manage to get through those two this week, that, that's pretty ambitious for me. I think two is like a pretty good number for me in a week. But if I do manage to overachieve somehow, I can always start the sequel to From Blood and Ash if I end up really enjoying it because I've heard from Jocelyn that that's just as good as the first one. Apparently it starts off a bit slow but then it gets much better. So yeah, I'm really, really excited to read those books. They just sound amazing. I'm very, very excited for this week's reading plans. Today is also a great day because for Wales, it is our first day out of lockdown. I think I mentioned it in last week's reading vlog that we've been in lockdown for about two and a half weeks and finally we've been allowed out today and I had a really nice morning. I went out to Cardiff Town with my mates and we actually managed to go to a restaurant and have actual restaurant food which is crazy. We went shopping, we went into shops, like that's mad, we can actually go into shops now. So I had a really nice time and it was just amazing because they had all the Christmas decorations up. Like I know it's only the start of November but I just can't help it, I'm just starting to feel like the Christmas vibes and the Christmas spirit. I was wondering what time of the month in November or December do you guys think it's appropriate to start decorating and celebrating and getting ready for Christmas? Because I can't help it, after today seeing all those decorations 
and getting a gingerbread frappuccino from Starbucks. I can't help wanting to start decorating and getting excited for it already. I've ordered some Christmas candles and some Christmas themed bookmarks, which I'll show you when they arrive. But yeah, I can't help it. I'm just already getting excited. So let me know when you think is the best time to start celebrating for Christmas. I asked on Twitter and the most common answer was like mid to late November. So I guess around the 20th is when a lot of people thought which is, I guess, what I thought too. But, you know, we've had such a rough year this year. It's been so depressing and horrible. I can't help thinking that maybe we should just, like, cheer ourselves up and celebrate Christmas extra long this year. Why not just start early? So, yeah, let me know what you think about that. But anyway, I think I'm going to get started with Kingdom of the Wicked now because it just looks so cool. I love the front cover as well. So I'm going to get started with that now. I'll probably watch some more of Haunting of Hill House, which I'm about halfway through as well. And I am loving. It's just amazing. So yeah, I'm going to get on with doing that now and I will update you soon with my progress on Kingdom of the Wicked. Hi, it is Wednesday today and I have a lot of exciting things to talk about today. So the first of that is my progress with Kingdom of the Wicked. So I'm over halfway through with this one now. I am on chapter 23 and page 179 and I'm really enjoying this one. I don't think it's got like a five star feel for me at this point, but I am definitely really enjoying it. So I'm guessing it's gonna be a four star if it carries on like this. One of the main things I'm really liking about this one actually is it has a lot of like Sicilian culture because it's set in Sicily and it feels really, really atmospheric. I love seeing all the language and there's like really atmospheric, beautiful descriptions of the cooking and stuff. I'm practically there in the restaurant where her family works. I can like smell the cooking and it's so nice. So she's had to team up with one of the princes of hell, Wrath, in order to find out who killed her sister. But witches and like princes of hell are sworn enemies. So it's definitely going to be a bit of a hate to lovers romance. I'm really excited about this one because right now they kind of despise each other. But I'm sensing there's a little bit of something there we are halfway through so I'm guessing by the end they might have started to realize their feelings a bit but it may be like the Stalking Jack the Ripper series where there's a lot and lot a lot of build up over lots of books so we'll have to see but I do love slow burn so I'm hoping that will happen and I'm definitely interested to see how this one goes I'm hoping I'll finish it by tomorrow maybe because if I read all of this afternoon and then more this morning I should be finished either that or Friday like please by the next time I update you I want to be done with this well not done with it that makes it sound like I want to get it done I am enjoying my read but I'd like to be productive with my reading so hopefully I will have finished and I think I'm also going to try picking up From Blood and Ash to read alongside this one to make a bit of variation and switch between the two like if I get bored of reading this one for hours or whatever I can switch over to From Blood and Ash and I'm just so excited for that one because I've heard it has some similarities with the Akatar series like a fantasy romance 
and Akatar, I'm not gonna lie, I know a lot of people hate on it and they think it's awful. It is my guilty pleasure, I'm in love with that series. I just think it's amazing. I know everyone hates it, but I just love it since I first read it when it first came out. I was just obsessed with it. So hate me if you want, but I am an Akatar stan, like a genuine Akatar lover. So I'm hoping it has similar vibes to that and it's about vampires. If you didn't see my last weekly reading vlog, I'm obsessed with the Vampire Diaries, so I love vampires. So this is sounding like it will be the perfect read for me. I don't want to speak too soon, but I will definitely let you know seeing my thoughts on that. Hopefully I'll have read like about 100 pages of that by the time I next update you, but I'm just really excited and just really, really hoping it's good because I've just had so many great things recently. And obviously I trust Jocelyn's opinion with my life, so I'm 100% certain, okay, 99% certain that I will love this book. And as you just saw in the transition, I did get some book mail from Waterstones. I'm just so, so happy I got my hands on these. I've just been waiting for ages to get them, but I've been putting it off because I'm slightly broke and I have a habit of spending money that I don't have. But then I saw Jodi. She's just got the most amazing channel. You should definitely go check her out. I just love her videos. And she's also from the UK, so another UK booktuber. But anyway, she works in Waterstones and she was advertising that Waterstones were doing double stamps over the weekend. And if you get 10 stamps, you get a £10 voucher. And I'm now on nine stamps, so I'm very, very happy with that. That was like the push I needed to buy these books. But anyway, I've been hearing so much about these recently because they're pretty new releases. The one I'm most excited for has to be The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue because I do really enjoy B.E. Schwab's books and I've just heard so much about this. It's meant to be really atmospheric and beautifully written and I'm just so, so excited. And I have also heard a lot of good things recently about A Deadly Education. I believe it is like Dark Academia, but I'm not 100% certain, but if it is Dark Academia, Academia, I will be over the moon because that is like my favorite genre. I love it so so much Okay, no fantasy is my favorite genre, but dark academia fantasy that would be the elite genre But anyway, I'm very very excited about these. and I'm so happy. I got them I just can't wait to read them hopefully within the next couple of weeks It would be great if I could actually get around to reading them in November and I'm thinking if I finish Kingdom of the Wicked and from blood and ash this week instead of going straight to the sequel to from blood and ash I could read one of these two because I do actually own them. It would save me a bit of money for now because I wouldn't have to buy the sequel. But we'll have to see. But I'm very, very excited to read these two. And they are also stunning as well. And they actually match each other pretty well. So I'm very, very excited to add these to my bookshelf. They're just going to look gorgeous. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about quickly. I promise I won't rant about it because I know I talked about it for ages in last week's weekly reading vlog. You're probably sick of hearing about it. But last night I finished The Haunting of Hill House. And my heart is broken. I'm on a mission to make everyone watch this series. It's just so beautiful and haunting and really devastatingly sad. Like, I think some people find it a bit depressing, but I just say it was really sad and tragic and beautiful. I just thought the cinematography and the writing was stunning. I thought the characters were like beautifully written. I just thought everything about this series was stunning. So please, please watch it if you haven't before. It's now one of my top series of all time. Like, I'm not joking. It is probably in my top five series of all time because I just thought it was beautiful. And now I have to watch The Haunting of Blind Manor as soon as possible. So let me know if you've watched that because I'd love to hear what you thought. And I just thought The Haunting of Hill House was just stunning. So yeah. Anyway, enough of talking about that, I promise. I'm gonna get on now with reading some more of Kingdom of the Wicked and making some more progress with that. And then also gonna start reading From Blood and Ash on my Kindle, which I'm so, so excited for. And I think as well, I'm gonna play a bit of The Sims because if you're a major Sims fan like me <laughs> and you've been obsessed with it for years, you'll be very excited about the new expansion pack that's coming out because on the 13th, I think it is, they're releasing the new expansion pack, which is Snowy Escape. And I know this probably sounds geeky, but I'm just ecstatic. I'm just so, so excited. And I'm just gonna be playing now, like getting ready for it, getting excited about the cool snowy world with all the skiing and the snowboarding. I'm very, very excited because it's only two days now till it comes out. I'm gonna buy it straight away, even though I've got no money. I'm just really, really excited. So I'm gonna get on with that reading and playing some Sims and I'll probably update you on Friday, which is actually the 13th. Hopefully I won't be too obsessed with playing the Sims like all day and I will have time to update you, but we'll see, I'm not making any promises. So I'm gonna get on with that now. Thank you. 
Hiya, it is Friday evening, it is 5pm and I've had to immediately grab my camera and start filming because I have just finished From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout and oh my god I'm actually, I'm obsessed with this book. So I picked it up yesterday, like quite late afternoon after I finished The Kingdom of the Wicked, which I promise I will get to in a moment. I will talk about that. But first I have to talk about From Blood and Ash because I'm just reeling from that book. Like, oh my God. I had a plan for today where I was actually gonna be playing The Sims most of the day, not gonna lie, because the new expansion pack, Scenario Escape came out today. But after I started From Blood and Ash last night, I couldn't put it down and I've genuinely been brilliant non-stop all day. I've done nothing else. I was gonna play The Sims, I was gonna do some work, I was gonna catch up on my lectures, but no, I have been literally reading this book for the entire day and I haven't stopped and I've just been addicted because it was just actually so good. Like genuinely, I love this book. I think it's probably gonna have to be a 4.5 stars for me. I could probably round it up to a five, I don't know. I put it as a 4.5 stars rather than a five stars because I would say it was pretty predictable. I wasn't taken back by any of these like plot points or revelations that happened throughout the book I did think it was all quite easy to guess obviously there were a couple of things that took me by surprise but I'd say overall it was a pretty predictable book but to be honest for me that didn't really take away from my enjoyment of the book at all I just loved it it's about a girl called Poppy who is this maiden character she's meant to be really pure and the queen is like looking after her to make sure she grows up to be this super pure maiden and she's going to go through this ritual and she's preparing for that and she meets this guard called Hawk and they're very drawn to each other and he's quite like dark and mysterious she's not sure too much about him and then he has to take a bit of a bigger role in her life kind of looking after her and then things start going wrong in the palace there are all these attacks from the kingdom's enemies who are basically vampires they're called the Atlanteans I think you would pronounce it and they're like vampires and then there's people showing up with bite marks on their necks it is also a romance so I would avoid this if you're not like into romance books or like smut or anything I will say the smut I thought was really well written and there was a lot of really good build up with that I thought it always made sense in the book and it really helped with the character development and the romance and the relationships I just thought it was all so good I loved that the central romance was kind of like a star cross for being a romance because he's like a guard and she's like this pure maiden who's not supposed to be with anyone there was a lot of like kingdom politic power play as well and like war and stuff woven through the plot I just thought it was amazing I loved the fantasy elements with the vampires and the vampire attacks <laughs> can you tell how much I love this book I just I can't get over it so I just thought it was so so good oh my god I'm just so grateful to Jocelyn for recommending me this she just knew I'd love it and I did so thank you so much Jocelyn for recommending that one I can't thank you enough and to be honest I just do have to move straight onto the sequel now I was thinking of moving on to Addie LaRue after this but as soon as I started from Blood and Ash and I was reading it, I was like there's no way I can just move away from this world I have to carry on and I have to find out what happens in the next book so I actually have bought that on my Kindle and I I'm gonna start reading it now after this. I'm just really, really excited to see where it goes. 
I know Jocelyn did say that there is a lot of time at the start where there's some conflict and it's a bit frustrating to read about but she said it gets a lot better after that so I think as long as I can get through that bit and keep in mind that it will improve I'm sure I'll really love it. I'm just so so happy I read that book it was the perfect mix of fantasy and romance two genres which I absolutely love and I'd really really recommend it if you're a fan of those genres especially if you're a fan of like Akatar series or anything like that which is another kind of fantasy romance. It has a sort of similar feel like a new adult fantasy romance it's just perfect so yeah I'd really really recommend that book and I just loved it. I also finished Kingdom of the Wicked by Karen Maniscalco and I did enjoy this one obviously from my voice you can tell I didn't enjoy it quite as much as from Blood and Ash but I'd still give this one like either a high three star probably a four star rating. I feel like my four star ratings vary a lot because I feel like it's too good to give it a three star but then again it's nowhere near that amazingness that I thought that From Blood and Ash was so it's like a it's like a low four stars I'll say but anyway I did still really enjoy this one I actually preferred it a lot more than the Stalking Jack the Ripper series because it suited me a lot better I think with the fantasy elements I really loved the dark witchy atmosphere of this because our main character is of course a witch and there were some really interesting spells and kind of rituals that happened I also really enjoyed the hate to love romance in this with Wrath and he was a really interesting character as well he wasn't like I expected I thought he'd just be really angry all the time but it was more like a kind of quiet, powerful anger. I can't describe it. He wasn't like a like a really feisty, angry character. He was more kind of quiet and brooding. That sort of angry, if you get what I mean. But anyway, I thought he was really interesting. And I love seeing the relationship between the two characters. And like I said, the setting was really cool. I love seeing Sicily and lots of the Italian language throughout. It was really interesting. And it was a massive cliffhanger at the end. I couldn't believe it ended like that. I did think it was a lot darker and a bit more grown up, I'd say, than the Stalking Jack the Ripper series. There was more kind of hints to smart as well, I'd say. So maybe it aimed at a bit of an older audience, which appealed to me a lot more. And I'm definitely excited for the sequel of this because, like I said, it did end on a bit of a cliffhanger. I'm really excited to see where the next one goes. I think it can go in great places and I'm just really excited to explore it. So... I did really enjoy this one, I'd say it is a four stars for me and I'm very very much looking forward to the sequel. Alright so now that I have finished From Blood and Ash and kind of calmed down from that really really intense ending, I'm going to get on now with starting at Kingdom of Flesh and Fire I think it's called. Yep yeah, it's called Kingdom of Flesh and Fire and I'm going to be starting that now and I'm just so excited. I just am really excited to see these characters again, this world again, the fantasy system, all these magical creatures it's just really really cool it's not just vampires actually they're in this there are some wolven which are like werewolves so we do get to see like an array of like different fantasy characters and i love that and i'm just so so excited i just can't wait and i might also tonight get around to buying and playing the snowy escape expansion pack but to be honest, if this is good, I'm not 100% counting on it because I might just be so like enthralled that I can't step away. But we'll have to see. I just, I'm so, so excited. And please let me know as well if you've read this series because I've been hearing so much about it recently. I'd love to know your thoughts and if you thought it was similar to Akatar or any other fantasy romances you've read. Please let me know as well if you know any good fantasy romances because I believe that is like one of my favourite genres. It's just it's just amazing so please please let me know of any good fancy romances because I need to read them immediately all right I'm gonna get on with reading that now then
Hi everyone, it is Sunday today and of course over the past couple of days I've been non-stop reading The Kingdom of Flesh and Fire and I am just I'm just in love with the series already. I'm 20% of the way through this one because I've been pretty busy, but I wouldn't say it's any less intriguing or good than the first book in the series. I just haven't had as much time to read with like seminar prep and stuff and being out and shopping and stuff. But yes, I am just so, so excited to carry on with this one. I'm sure I'll finish it probably by maybe Monday or Tuesday next week. So in the next couple of days, I'm definitely expecting to finish this really soon because it's just so easy to fly through. The characters are just as great as ever. I'm just so intrigued to see where the plot goes. I'm really excited to see these relationships grow and change and maybe meet some new characters as well. There's already been a couple of new characters introduced that I'm really interested by and I'm just I'm just in love with this series, as you can tell. It genuinely might be like a new top series for me because I just, I'm so intrigued. And also I didn't realise that From Blood and Ash only came out this year. I think it was self-published by Jennifer L. Armentrout in March, like during lockdown and everything. And then this one only just came out in September, so she's publishing them like every six months or so. So maybe, I think there will be a third one in this series. I'm not 100% sure though, it might be a duology. But if there is going to be a third one, then it might come out very soon because if she's publishing them like twice a year, that is amazing. So I'm just so excited to carry on with this one, see where it goes, and I'll probably be vlogging again next week so you'll get to see my thoughts as I carry on with that and I'm just so, so excited. And I'm thinking after I finish this, I might start Adi Luru as well because I've just been seeing so many amazing things about that, like everyone is obsessed with it, so I just might have to start that as soon as possible. Something else I wanted to talk about quickly was my friend Gabby, she's one of my best friends and she runs a clothing brand called psych and psych is short for psychedelic meaning intense vivid color and her brand really reflects that and i just wanted to talk about it because she's done a huge launch today so exciting she's released loads of new streetwear really cool joggers and hoodies and they're just beautiful i myself have ordered myself a new hoodie so you'll be seeing that very soon in my videos but i just wanted to let you guys know about that because i really think it's worth checking it out it is just amazing her clothes are such good quality and i love them so so much i love the new winter sun collection which is aimed at at being like really bright and colourful but also engineered towards like winter months so really warm and cosy clothes that also have really beautiful bright prints as well so I love her brand so much it is amazing I'll be linking it down in the description below so please check that out because her new launch is today and it's going amazingly but yeah I just want to give her a quick shout out because she really deserves it she's worked so hard on the collection and I love her clothes so so much so please check that out Alright, so I think I'm going to end the reading vlog here because it is Sunday. I'm going to get on with reading some more of Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I'm so, so excited to carry on. And also playing some more of The Sims Snow Escape. As you saw, I've been obsessed. I just sat down and I played it for hours the other night because I loved it a lot. It's just so fun. I just love the new world. It's Japanese inspired. There's so much Asian culture throughout the pack, which I love to see and my sims can go snowboarding, so I'm in love. I'm very, very much in love with this pack. I made my sim a girlfriend, they're getting a baby. I'm gonna send the baby to uni when she's growing up. I'm just, I've got big plans for my sims and I'm very, very excited. So yeah, I'm gonna get on with all of that tonight and I'm just really, really looking forward to carrying on with Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. And let me know again if you've read From Blood and Ash or From Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. I know a lot of people are reading it at the moment for books with Chloe's Patreon buddy read. So if you're participating with that, I'd love to know your thoughts as you go through it because I love it, I love it a lot. Anyway, I'm gonna end the reading vlog here. So I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching my video and I'll see you next week's weekly reading vlog. Bye!